Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, August 5th, 5.47 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. December corn futures down five and a quarter at 6.01. November soybeans down 11 and a half at 14.06 and a quarter. September Chicago wheat down seven and a half at 7.75. September Kansas City wheat down five and a half at 8.54 and three quarters. September spring wheat down five and a half at 8.88 and three quarters. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it as always. Uh, leave me a rating, leave me a review on that Apple app in particular. Could certainly use some more. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment. Give me a crop update. Let me know what's going on in your neighborhood. If you'd like some additional information from me, go to my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central Time. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Lots of interesting charts, graphics, weather info. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. Yesterday, I talked about courage calls. Is it time for courage calls? I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the strategy. I kind of provided my opinion on the strategy in general, uh, laid out some uh, examples, talked about the pros and cons. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, sign up today. It's 50 bucks a month. You can cancel at any time. There's no other fee. There's no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. China announced sanctions on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The Chinese Foreign Ministry announced unspecified sanctions against Pelosi and her immediate family following her trip to Taiwan this week. This makes Pelosi the highest ranking U.S. official to be sanctioned by China. A Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson said that fresh China-Taiwan tensions were entirely caused by Speaker Pelosi and U.S. politicians. So the, the sanctions here are unspecified. They don't talk about exactly what they mean. In the past, when China has sanctioned individuals, it often involves restricting visits to China, uh, restrictions in regard to doing business in China. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken said that China had chosen to overreact to Pelosi's trip and used, his, used it as a pretext to engage in, in provocative military activity. So again, uh, tensions with China and the United States escalating here to some extent. Does this have any implications for agriculture at all? I'm not sure, but of course China has an enormous appetite or has uh, in the past when it comes to U.S. ag products, uh, soybeans, corn, beef, pork, a whole bunch of stuff. So, I mean, you never like to see the tensions here. All that being said, China's, you know, they continue to buy U.S. soybeans. Um, we've got a, a nice book of new crop soybean sales, as a matter of fact, and China accounts for more than half of it. But uh, you don't like to see this stuff necessarily. It's uh, a fluid situation, I would say. Three more grain ships uh, left Ukrainian ports today, and the first inbound vessel is set to load Ukrainian grain later today. Ukraine's infrastructure minister said this, We expect that the security guarantees of our partners from the UN and Turkey will continue to work, and food exports from our ports will become stable and predictable for all market participants. Uh, perhaps more importantly here, a Russian spokesperson said this, this is not a one-time mechanism, but a mechanism that is designed to ensure the export of grain that has accumulated in these ports. Therefore, we hope that this mechanism will continue to work just as effectively. So you've got Russia on board here, um, at least the way that they're talking. Does that mean that they continue to follow through with this? I don't know. Uh, despite the grain shipments, NATO's Secretary General called the Russia-Ukraine war the most dangerous moment in Europe since World War II. He said that Russia must not be allowed to win. Uh, you've still got these energy tensions also between Europe and Russia. Uh, Russia is still only pumping natural gas via that Nord Stream pipeline at like 20% capacity. Europe is facing significant energy shortages that are likely to worsen this winter. So in regard to grains moving out of Ukraine, I mean, it, it appears to be all good here for the moment. How long does, that, does this continue? Does Russia um, put a stop to this at some point in time? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, when it comes to the markets and how they've reacted, the wheat market's just been sideways as of late at much, much lower prices. I mean, wheat futures, uh, you know, on the CME, U.S. wheat futures have lost, what, 40% of their value uh, since they peaked in the spring. And uh, they've just kind of been sideways here the last few weeks. So we're not seeing the volatility, uh, uh, you know, with these day-to-day -day headlines uh, regarding Ukraine like we did a few months back. It's just, I don't know if the market doesn't care anymore. I don't know if the market's exhausted. I don't uh, know exactly what the situation is, but the market does not seem overly interested in these headlines. And that goes for corn too. 
we got some rains moving uh, part over parts of uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, like the western portions uh, here today, more so in uh, Kentucky. The U.S. Corn Belt, most of the plains, uh, pretty much dry here this morning. Forecasts for the next 7 to 10 days, they favor rains in the eastern Corn Belt in addition to uh, northern parts of Iowa, maybe I guess some, some of the central and eastern Iowa also, southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the eastern parts of South Dakota. Now there is some conflict in the models again, and it's the same conflict that we've had the last few days in that the Euro model looks more similar to this uh, government map that I've got on my screen here. It's wetter for these western areas. The GFS is much drier for some of these western areas. So um, the way that it looks, I think most of the forecasters are of the opinion that these rains will hit in uh, southern Minnesota and Iowa and uh, South Dakota. Some of this stuff slated for uh, like Sunday, Monday next week. So we'll see what happens. The southern plains are um, essentially a disaster in progress. There's no rain. It's going to be hot. Uh, that's been the case for a long time. This is a loop of temperatures uh, today through Sunday, so the weekend. This is going to be maximum observed temperature. So you're going to see stuff, you know, 90s, over 100 degrees in the southern plains. And some of that heat is actually going to make its way up into, uh, you know, Nebraska, into South Dakota, maybe North Dakota, into uh, Iowa, Missouri, uh, places uh, further east than that a little bit. So it's going to be a hot weekend in a lot of play in a lot of places, especially the plains and into the western Corn Belt. Now, looking at the drought monitor here this morning, uh, U.S. corn and soybean areas experiencing drought continue to expand. During the last couple of months, you've seen these statistics move higher. Uh, drought in U.S. spring wheat areas continue continues uh, to contract. If you look at areas experiencing drought versus June 7th, so you go back two months, corn areas experiencing drought now are 31% in the United States. That number was 19% on June 7th. Soybean areas experiencing drought, 28%. That number was only 10% on June 7th. Spring wheat areas experiencing drought have declined to 17% from 25 on June 7th. So some, a lot of areas have turned drier, and you've seen drought expand in uh, U.S. corn and soybean areas, certainly. USDA reported kind of a lackluster week of export sales yesterday. Old crop corn sales were soft at just 58,000. New crop corn sales were okay at 257, I guess. Old crop soybean sales were negative to the tune of 11,000. Uh, new crop soybean sales were okay at 411. Wheat sales soft at uh, 250. Seasonally, new crop sales of corn and soybeans begin to become larger this time of year. You get buyers uh, around the world. They start to become more aggressive with new crop purchases of U.S. corn and soybeans. U.S. exporters have the third best book of new crop soybean sales on record. Uh, 20 and 13, 2013 and 2014 were better. The new crop corn book is the sixth best on record. A whole bunch of years have been better than this year. It's not bad, but it's not uh, like really good like the soybean book is. Uh, the cattle market yesterday was... Um, we were mixed in live cattle and lower in feeder cattle. The cash market hasn't done anything real exciting here. Um, it was 135 to 136 in the south and 140 in the north. The U.S. dollar is marginally higher this morning. The S&P is about flat. The Dow's up 30 points. Bonds off a little bit. Crude oil is down 43 cents at 88.11 in the September WTI. That contract traded its lowest level since mid-March yesterday. We have seen this correlation between crude oil and corn and some of the grain markets this year, and uh, maybe we're in the process of breaking that because we've seen some strength in the grain markets here. Well, crude has sold off the last couple of days, but uh, we'll see if that relationship remains intact or not. Uh, everybody have a wonderful weekend. I will talk to you guys on Monday morning.